What's going on, y'all? It's your main man, King Bishop. Just had a text message come in. Checking in with y'all from Duckin, South Carolina. So, I'm having a pretty, pretty sucky, sucky evening. So, we'll tell you a little bit about, give you a little bit of education for those of you who are interested in becoming an auto operator. Um, a lease purchase operator or more or less with a company who has an owner operator set up so basically a lot of a lot of carriers work this way okay so you have the carrier themselves I'm gonna use Landstar as an example because Landstar has this same uh, exact setup so you have Landstar okay Landstar itself is a brand it's a company um, but it's more or less a brand. Customers, uh, whether it be you know Walmart or wherever it is, come to Landstar and say, "I have freight. I need to be moved." For Landstar, had, Landstar has a network of drivers who it gives the opportunity through the load board to get these loads. And that's since Landstar themselves are the broker for the load. Another way it may happen is. Um, U.S. Express may call Landstar and say, hey, I have three loads coming out of Walmart that I couldn't cover. I need you to get a couple of drivers to cover it. So in that sense, Landstar is still a broker, but U.S. Express is the broker on the load. Okay? They just become the carrier. Landstar becomes simply the carrier at that point and not as much as broker in the load. And then when you get into the details of this stuff is when you start adding agents. So what's an agent? An agent is someone who has a broker's authority, but they choose to run underneath of a larger carrier to make the availability to get loads moved easier. So let me give you another example using the same scenario. So the... Um, U.S. Express uh, calls an agent and said, hey, I have three loads I couldn't move. Okay, They say, okay, uh, I'll get your three loads moved. The agent then, if they have drivers who they deal with every day, they may call, they may text or whatever. They may take those loads and put it on Landstar's board. Um, that's, that's where you get into. So the agent is the middleman that represents the driver more or less. A broker is the middleman that represents the shipper to make it all easy. Um, now, don't get it twisted. By represent the driver, I mean that the, I'm, maybe a better word is connect. So the broker is the person who connects to the shipper, and the agent is the one that connects to the driver. Okay. So in, in, in simpler terms, do they do the same thing? More or less. Um, their jobs are the same except for brokers are not looking for trucks. They're looking for someone who has trucks to move it. Um, an agent is not always, which they some agents do have direct customer freight where they don't have to go through the broker at all um, or go through low boards. They, they deal directly with the shipper. That happens a lot of times. But in most cases, a lot of these agents are working the low boards. They're working the low boards, and if they have four, five, six, seven, ten drivers who tell them, hey, I want to work with you exclusively, they keep they try their best to keep those drivers moving. I am having a crappy day dealing with the broker and the agent and the customer. Um, so I picked this trail up out of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Start moving today, get to Atlanta, which is about 150 miles away from Tuscaloosa, and um, the tire, the rear axle of the trailer on the driver's side is smoking really bad. Now, I had a hard brake incident where a car that was in front of me, I was in the all the way slow lane, the fourth lane over, and a car actually ran into the guardrail. He was some type of distracted, sleepy, I don't know what, but it was in the middle of the day, but he ran into a guardrail. There was traffic all around me. I decided that I was not going to swerve to avoid him to try to and, and risk taking someone else's life. So I decided to slam on brakes. I was able to stop. I didn't hit him. Everything was fine. 
Um, but at this point, I've had a hard break, and now the trailer's reacting to it by smoking. So, I pull over to the side of the road. I'm thinking it's just like anything else. Trailer smokes, you let it cool down, everything will be okay. Well, I let it cool down. I sat for about an hour, stopped smoking. I still let it cool down a little while long. I wanted to be sure I get rolling. Um, I stop and take a break to get something to eat. I don't notice any smoke. I do notice the smell of burning, but it's not bad. So, I keep moving. And this whole process, I've stopped three times to try to find a repair facility. Now, mind you, just getting ahead of myself. When I stopped on the side of the road in Atlanta, I called maybe eight different repair shops and nobody would come to me in the middle of downtown Atlanta. Well, not downtown, but the middle of Atlanta doing all that traffic. Either people didn't have roadside or they just were like, oh, no, nah, I'm not willing to come out there. So I had to keep moving, you know, so I got the agent's approval to keep moving before I did move. Because like you said, the agent is my contact. I called the broker and made him aware of the situation, but the agent is my contact. So, long story short, I finally get to South Carolina and I see a TA, I'm like, they have to have one. I stop when we're good, get checked in, they call me in, all right, cool. So they start checking it out. Um, now this is a very, very old trailer. This is not my trailer, this is a power only load. This means that I'm just bringing my truck and they are supplying their trailer. I am moving this trailer from Alabama to Maryland. Um, and it's full of construction tools. So that's what it was. That's what it has on it. But the trailer is very, very old itself. Huh. So long story short, um, the wheel hub is so old it has an older setup which means it doesn't even look like the newer hubs which means in order to investigate what may be wrong with it they have to basically tear the entire hub apart assembly and all the problem with that is is that on the back of that is a seal now they checked it it does have an oil seal and the oil is leaking everywhere it's empty rusted which means it's been leaking long before I got it puts me in the clear the problem with that is now that if they pull that assembly off they have to change that seal Obviously, that seal is bad because it's leaking fluid. It's so old that they may not have the seal for it. If they don't have the seal for it, the trailer becomes evoked because they cannot put the rest of the hub together. I won't even be able to pull it out of the bay. I won't even be able to pull it out of the bay to move it to a parking spot. It's stuck right here. So, um, in this whole process, I've been dealing with the broker and the agent and the mechanics and even to the point where the broker attempted to try to tell me that it was my fault because I continued to move the trailer and I told him I didn't have a choice that I got it approved by the agent if you have an issue you did with the agent or why I moved because I didn't move until she told me I had to move because there was no one going to come to me so I did what I needed to do to get to a safe location to get it repaired that's all I can do uh, other than leave it on the side of the road which I could have done with all your tools in it, but you don't realize that. Another thing, the broker attempted to tell me that I'm not going to leave until his client, the shipper, released me to leave. And I proceeded to tell him that if he wanted a company truck, he picked the wrong guy. Because I paid the fuel, the truck note, the insurance, bobtail. I pay it all on this truck. This is my truck. I move it when I say move it with or without a trailer, with or without your trailer. So I told him, it's up to you. If you tell them to tear it apart and it cannot be fixed, you're screwed because today's Friday, nowhere's open, and that's the issue we have. They cannot get the parts. So it may be Monday or Tuesday before they get everything they need to fix it. And King Bishop will not be here until Monday or Tuesday waiting to get a trailer repaired. Not going to happen. So you would need to find another power unit to get it fixed. And you're still going to pay me, by the way. Um, so, um, after going back and forth, I've been here now three and a half hours, um, they finally, the customer finally made the decision to have them tear it apart. If they have the seal for it, great fix it. If they don't, we're going to leave it, and I'm going to leave, and he's okay with that. The agent will get another truck here to pull it next week sometime, whenever it's ready. So that's the story of my Friday so far. Um, it's been a tough one. In other news, I got big, big news for you guys. I'm not going to tell you right now, of course. This is called Click and Video Bait. 
I'm baiting you to watch the next video. You hear me? As always, man, I appreciate y'all for watching. Please continue. Because I don't have to ask y'all to do it because y'all are already doing it. So please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have noticed one thing on my page, I respond to just about all the comments. Now listen, if I have not responded to your comments, let me tell you what happens. I'm going to make it real quick. I do not have the ability for some reason to comment from YouTube's website. I have to go through the app. And the app takes forever to show the comments. And sometimes they don't put all of them up there because I can look online and see how comments that I'm not seeing on the app. For some reason, it will not let me respond. So if I'm not responding, that's the reason why. I love y'all, man. Y'all be easy. God bless y'all. Enjoy y'all weekend. Peace. Uh